Now next is the circular wave guide. So a circular wave guide has a circular cross section. So it has a circular cross section. So we have boundaries for all theta and at all r equal to a. So this is the radius and uh, this is uh, the, ra the radius is a. This is the radial direction. The radius is a and it is free to propagate in the z direction. So now again all components of the electric field and magnetic field will satisfy this wave equation. So del perpendicular is the transverse uh, uh, del and again here kc square is equal to omega square by c square minus kg square. So since this is uh, this is a circular waveguide we, we will solve this in cylindrical coordinates. So in cylindrical coordinates del perpendicular square can be written as 1 by r del by del r of r del by del r plus 1 by r square del 2 by del theta square. So this uh, two dimensional wave equation in r and theta if you substitute here this becomes like this. Now here psi can be either ez or bz. So you know that you need to solve only for ez or bz. Okay, so you know from Maxwell's equation that curl of e, curl of e is equal to minus del b by del t and curl of b is equal to 1 by c square del e by del t. So uh, as we did in the previous lecture, you can simply write each component of uh, component from this equation and uh, each component from this equation. So you will get three equations here, three equations here. Okay, and uh, you know that uh, uh, the variation, the exponential variation is e to the power of i k g z minus omega t. So if you take the derivative with respect to z, you will get i k g and if you take the derivative with respect to time, you will get minus i omega. So in these three equations and in these three equations, if you substitute del by del z with i k g and del by del t with minus i omega, you can see that uh, all the transverse components that means e r, e theta, b r, b theta, they can be obtained from ez and bz alone. So you just need to find out the, uh, you just need to solve for ez and bz and then using that you can get the values of er, e theta, br and b theta. So we have to solve the two dimensional wave equation only for ez and bz. Okay and uh, the boundary conditions are that ez is equal to 0 at r is equal to a. So that means the tangential component of electric field is 0 and del psi by del m that means where psi is equal to bz uh, is 0 for r is equal to a this is the normal component of magnetic field is equal to 0. So you just have to solve the wave equation for uh, ez and bz with these boundary conditions as we did for the case of rectangular wave guide. So let us say the tm case <clears throat> so here for the tm case bz is equal to 0 and ez will definitely exist. So now we have to solve this for ez and from ez we can derive er e theta br b theta. So we have to solve just one equation for ez. Now we know the form of electric field is uh, like this. So the amplitude here now depends on r and theta. r and theta are the directions in which the boundary is applied to the system. Okay, so the wave is free to propagate in the z direction. So it is a propagating wave in the z direction but it will form a standing wave in r and theta direction. So this is the wave equation for uh, written in terms of ez. We can expand del perpendicular square and uh, we get this expression. So this is the total wave equation in the z direction. Now as before as we did for the uh, uh, rectangular wave guide we can write uh, ez r theta as r which is a function of r only and capital theta which is a function of theta only and solve this uh, equation by using the method of separation of variables. So substituting uh, instead of ez in this equation if we substitute instead of ez capital R and capital theta so we get like this. So, so this is the expression now we divide throughout by R and capital theta. So, uh, so here this is derivative with respect to r. So theta comes out and if you divide uh, uh, with r and theta, theta is cancelled here and similarly from here this, this expression is, uh, this is derivative with respect to theta. So r comes out 
and when you divide by capital R capital theta R will get cancelled. So we are left with this equation. Now we uh, so this is the expression. Now again we can rearrange this and uh, write it as this expression here. So now if you notice the left hand side it is a function of R only and the right hand side is a function of theta only. So again as before uh, this is possible when each side is equal to the same constant. So you can make this as equal to you can equate both the left hand side and right hand side as equal to some constant m, m, m square. So now we get to uh, so so here we have kept it equal to m square. So now you get two equations. One is the radial equation, and one is the equation in the theta coordinate. So let's write the equation in uh, the radial coordinate. So we get here r by r del r by del r r del r by del r plus kc square r square is equal to m square. And uh, in the theta coordinate, we have del two capital theta by del theta square plus m square capital theta is 0. Now this um, equation in theta, this is again the equation of a simple harmonic oscillator and it has solutions of the form of cosine and sine theta. So you can write the solution capital theta as a m cos m theta plus b m sin m theta. Now the relative amplitude of a m and b m, they determine the orientation of the field in the guide. So that means which of the two components dominate. For a circular waveguide and for any particular value of m, the theta axis can always be oriented. So you can always orient the theta axis such that one of them goes to 0. So let us do that for simplicity. So we orient the axis such that bm is equal to 0. So we are left with just uh, one component, theta is equal to am cos theta. So the variation in theta, so we are solving here for ez. So the variation in theta, uh, the in, in capital theta, uh, in theta is, um, cosi is cosine form. Now let us solve the second equation. So here this is the uh, equation in the radial direction. So this is the equation. So we can take m on the left hand side and then we multiply this equation throughout by r and rearrange so we get this expression r del by del r multiplied by r del r by del r plus kc square r square minus m square times r is equal to 0. So now here uh, both in the numerator and denominator we can multiply by kc, kc is independent of r so we can just uh, divide and multiply by kc here as well as here. So now we have this, this net resultant equation. This is a Bessel's equation in terms of KCR and it has two solutions. One is the Bessel function JM KCR and the other one is the Newman function. Now let us denote KCR with capital X. So we can write this expression in terms of X. So the solution of, so this as I said is the Bessel's equation okay in terms of x or kcr and it has two solutions the Bessel function and the Newman function. So Bessel functions are, uh, so I plotted it here. So uh, so Bessel functions are basically functions of, they, they are of various orders. So we have j0, this is the Bessel function of 0th order. Then we have uh, j1 which is the Bessel function of 1st order. Then we have the Bessel function of 2nd order and so on. Okay, and similarly we have Newman function, the Newman functions again of the 0th order, the 1st order and the 2nd order and so on. Okay, now uh, if you notice this from these equations, we see that at x is equal to 0 or at r is equal to 0, the Bessel function, uh, it has a finite solution. So here it is, so it is if you see j m x is proportional to x to the power of m at x is equal to 0. Okay, however, if you see the Newman function, it is infinite at x is equal to 0. Okay, so this is infinite. Now, since the field must be finite in a waveguide at r is equal to 0, you cannot have infinite uh, field. It is an uh, unphysical solution. So, we reject the solution of uh, solution that is the Newman function and we accept only the Bessel function as the solution. So now, so the solution for this equation is now R is JM KCR.
so now we can write the total uh, solution of the z field so z was r capital r into capital theta so capital r now is j m k c r and capital theta is a m cos theta which we had just found out so the complete solution for tm mode inside the waveguide is given as uh, ez r theta z t is am which is some constant j m k c r so it's uh, the variation is of the form of bessel function in the r direction and cosine variation in the theta direction and then it's a propagating wave in the z direction propagating with a propagation constant kg okay so now uh, let's see the boundary conditions for the tm mode bz is equal to 0 and ez exists so the boundary conditions are that at r is equal to a so let's see this this is the rate this is the radius so r is equal to a now we have this ez component okay ez component is here so at r is equal to a this is ez component and this ez component is the uh, tangential component so by definition or by boundary condition ez has to go to zero at r is equal to a for all theta so in this equation if we substitute ez is equal to zero at r is equal to a we get zero is equal to am jm kc a now what does this mean this means that uh, jm is zero for all the roots of the bessel function so where is jm zero so jm is zero at this for uh, j zero j zero is zero at this point it is zero at this point at this point and so on similarly j1 is zero at this point this point this point and so on and similarly j2 is zero here here and so on okay so these are the uh, roots of the bessel function so the above equation has infinite number of roots so uh, we can write this now as xmn is equal to kca now here xmn is the nth zero of the bessel function jm so nth zero means it is telling us about the root of the bessel function so wherever this is zero this is the root of the bessel function so xmn is the nth zero of the bessel function jm so physically n represents the number of cycles of variation of ez so uh, uh, how many times ez goes to zero so let's say for uh, for this case if ez has to be zero here so uh, if we if we take j0 it can be zero here or it can be zero here so the variation can be so uh, for different modes the uh, one variation could be like this another variation could be like this okay in the radial direction of ez so kc is equal to xmn where uh, xmn denotes the nth zero of the bessel function jm xmn by a so cut off frequency from here you can calculate omega c mn is given by c xmn a okay so uh, the various zeros of the bessel function can be read from the table so the table is shown here so for example the first zero of the bessel function j0 so j Uh, m is equal to zero, and the first uh, zero is at. So the first zero is at almost approximately two point five. So we see that it is two point four zero five. Similarly, the second zero is at five point five two. The third zero is at eight point six point six five four. So these values can be read from the tables. now for te case for the te case ez is equal to 0 and uh, bz will exist so now we have to solve for bz so again uh, as before since the boundaries are applied in the r and theta direction okay so it's uh, the circular waveguide is bounded in r and theta direction and uh, open in the z direction so the equation can be written as bz r theta so the amplitude is a function of r and theta only and propagating in the z direction okay so we have to solve the wave equation for bz and again we know that er e theta br b theta they can be obtained from bz so this is the wave uh, equation and uh, we write it for bz we can expand this in uh, cylindrical coordinates 
and then again as before solving it with uh, separation of vari uh, variables bz is a function of r and theta where r is a function of r only and capital theta is a function of theta only so again we get this uh, uh, an expression like this so we can solve it and now we have to apply the boundary condition that the normal component of magnetic field is zero at the boundary at r is equal to a for all values of theta so we apply the boundary condition del bz by del r is zero at r is equal to a for all values of theta so or in other words now uh, so we know the solution is of the form of bessel function so now it will be uh, we have to differentiate the bessel function with respect to r and that is equal to zero at r is equal to a so in other words gm prime kca is equal to zero so gm prime is what it is the derivative of the bessel function uh, with respect to r so <clears throat> Again, you can uh, get this from uh, tables. These values can be got from tables. So here, J M prime X M N is equal to zero, and so X M uh, X M N prime, which is the derivative. So uh, so this is the nth root of the uh, derivative of the uh, uh, Bessel function J M. Okay, so this is equal to K C into A. From here, K C. Uh, you can get it as x prime m n divided by a, and again you can calculate the frequency of the um, m n mode. So here, x prime m n is the nth zero of the derivative of the Bessel function. That means j prime m. So now b z can be written as uh, again a m j m k c r cos m theta and uh, propagating in the z direction with a propagation constant k g. <clears throat> so these are the Bessel function and the derivative of the Bessel function. So this is uh, uh, and both the values, the zeros of the Bessel function, as well as the derivative of the Bessel function, can be found out from uh, these graphs or by reading tables. Okay, now let's come to the rectangular cavity. Okay, so uh, so far we were seeing that uh, we uh, we had applied boundary conditions in two directions. Okay, and the wave was free to propagate in the third direction. Now we are applying boundary in the third direction as well. So now uh, it should form a standing wave in all the three directions. So there will be no propagation, just the standing wave form in all the three directions. So first, let us consider the rectangular cavity. So rectangular cavity for the TE mode, Ez is equal to zero. So remember, there is no propagation in the cavity because now you have applied boundary in all the directions. So uh, when you say TE transverse electric, so uh, you would wonder it is transverse with respect to what? Because now there is no propagation of the wave. So by convention, we take it as transverse to the z direction. Okay. So transverse electric means that means the electric field is transverse to the z direction. So Ez is equal to zero. So Bz will exist. And now, if you solve it again, if you solve uh, uh, the wave equation in uh, x, y, z, and you apply the boundary conditions that the normal component of magnetic field is zero and tangential component of electric field is zero, you will get a standing wave in all the three directions. So you see here a cosine variation in uh, x cosine variation in y and a sinusoidal variation in z okay and it is no longer a propagating wave so there is no kg involved here so earlier you had this expression e to the power of i kg z minus omega t so now this kg term is not there we are just left with this time variation so there is only time variation there is no variation uh, uh, there is no now propagation in the z direction. It's a standing wave in all the three directions. Again, as before, you can find out the uh, cutoff frequency. So now you have boundaries in three directions. So you will have m, n, and p, where m, n, and p are integers. So omega c m n p is given by uh, is equal to pi c under under root m square by a square plus n square by b square plus p square by d square. So you see that the cutoff frequency of all the modes, it depends only on the dimension of the system. Uh, others are all constant. Okay. Similarly, now for the TM mode, TM mode can also exist in the cavity. We have Bz is equal to zero. And if you solve it, 
you get Ez is equal to E0, so sinusoidal variation in X, sinusoidal variation in Y and the cosine variation in Z and no propagation, just a time variation. The fields are varying in time. So just remember the case of the stretch string. So here it is uh, in the stretch string also, there is no variation with space. The ends have zero displacement and the center point has maximum displacement. Okay, but there is always variation with time. So just like that here, there is variation with time, but no variation with space. So the cutoff frequency is again given by the same formula for both TE and TM modes. And here M, N and P are integers and they represent half pay, uh, half wave variation in the fields in the X, Y and Z direction respectively. Next is the cylindrical cavity. Now cylindrical cavity also again similar way we can solve. Now here uh, we put end plates at z is equal to 0 and at z is equal to l. So here it is now closed in all the three directions. Okay, a circular, a cylindrical waveguide was open in the z direction. But now we have put in plates here uh, at both the ends. So now it is closed. So a cylindrical cavity is generally used for acceleration and uh, you can solve uh, for the fields uh, in the cavity by uh, for EZ and BZ for uh, either TM mode or TE mode and uh, I have written the results here directly. So here for the TM mode BZ is equal to 0 and when you so you can put EZ uh, in the wave equation and then put the boundary conditions that uh, uh, the tangential component of electric field is 0 and normal component of magnetic field is 0 and solve for it and then you will get uh, Ez like this. So you see that the Ez has a uh, Bessel function dependence in R and cosine function in theta uh, dependence in theta and z. Okay, so this is similar to the case of the waveguide. Now since it is bounded in the z direction also, so you have a cosine variation in the z direction and again it's a uh, it's a propagating uh, it's it's not a propagating wave it's a standing wave in all the three directions r theta and z from ez you can find out the values of er e theta br and b theta and they are shown here so everywhere notice that the variation in uh, r depends upon the bessel function uh, or the derivative of the bessel function whereas the dependence in the theta and z direction are sinusoidal you can calculate the frequency. So here the frequency, um, uh, the cutoff frequency or the frequency of the M and P modes where M and P are integers uh, is given by this formula. It is C by 2 pi under root XMN square by RC square. RC is the radius of the cavity plus P pi by L square. L is the length of the cavity. And as before, as in the case of waveguide, XMN is the nth zero of the Bessel function JM. Okay. And uh, XMN is simply KMN into RC. Similarly, you can solve for uh, similarly you can solve for TE mode. In this case, EZ is equal to zero, and uh, you can find out the value of BZ. So again, BZ, if you see uh, in the radial direction, it has dependence. Uh, it has a Bessel function dependence, and in theta and Z direction it has cosine sine variations and this is true for all the components. So you can find out the cutoff frequency here. The cutoff frequency is uh, different from the, the formula for cutoff frequency is different from that of the TM mode. So here it is C by 2 pi x prime square mn by rc plus p pi by l square. So here this is uh, uh, the nth root or the nth zero of the derivative of the Bessel function. Okay. So there it was uh, for the TM mode it was nth zero of the Bessel function JM. So uh, let's see how the modes are in a cavity. Now let's say we have uh, so both TM and TE modes can exist depending on the values of M, N and P. So let's say you have uh, mode 1 at frequency FC1, mode 2 at frequency FC2 mode 3 and 4 at frequency fc3 and so on so there will be uh, there will be many such uh, modes okay now since boundaries are applied in all the three directions the electromagnetic wave is a standing wave in all the three directions so there is no propagating wave so only discrete frequencies are allowed 
okay so only when this uh, electromagnetic wave that you try to put inside the cavity when it matches with these values that means it matches with the frequency of these modes so it is equal to fc1 or it is equal to fc2 or fc3 only then the electromagnetic wave will enter inside the cavity at any frequency in between these frequencies the electromagnetic wave will be reflected back because there is no propagation in the case of waveguide so if you uh, if you had put in the wave in between the two frequencies it would have adjusted the wavelength of propagation and would propagate inside the waveguide but here since it is for, uh, forming a standing wave in all the three directions so here what is happening is that only when you feed in power at these frequencies the electromagnetic wave enters inside the cavity at all other frequencies it is reflected back so only for these frequencies the wave will enter the cavity and it will form a standing wave pattern corresponding to that mode so just summarizing what we did today we saw a rectangular wave guide uh, so here this is the cut off frequency for uh, uh, mn uh, mode for both uh, te and tm the formula is the same okay for circular wave guide uh we have different formulas for the cut off frequency for the mn mode okay so here it is in the case of te mode it is we take derivative uh, uh, so x prime mn this is the nh0 of the derivative of the bessel function and then uh, from wave guides we went to cavity so in the cavity again in the rectangular cavity the uh, formula for cut off frequency it depends upon the dimensions of all the three systems and uh, we saw that the formula is the same for both te mnp modes and tm mnp modes in a circular cavity the uh, formula is different for both te and T, uh, te and te mnp modes so here there will be p here there will be p here okay so to summarize in a wave guide the wave forms standing wave in the direction in which there are conducting boundaries in order to satisfy the boundary conditions at these boundaries now in the direction in which there are no boundaries it is still going to be a traveling wave okay so in a wave guide any frequency above the cut off frequency is propagated and the wave uh, propagates in the modes that are allowed in a cavity since there are conducting boundaries in all the three directions the electromagnetic wave is a standing wave in all the three directions there is no propagating wave so only discrete frequencies are allowed and only at these frequencies uh, of the modes the wave will enter the uh, cavity and form standing wave pattern corresponding to that mode any other frequency is reflected back so in the next lecture we'll see the field pattern for different modes in a cavity we'll try to understand how the field patterns look for uh, look like for different modes in the cavity and we will try to understand that how acceleration is done using these modes of a cavity so because our actual aim was so remember alvarez uh, what did he propose he said that to use the electric fields associated with the electromagnetic waves in a high q cavity so now we know how the electromagnetic waves in a cavity look like and then we'll see that how using these fields we can accelerate so that's in the next lecture